Hey students, how are you all? So in this video, we are going to look how scientists discovered that atoms have a nucleus in them. And this discovery was made by, by a New Zealand-born scientist named as Ernest Rutherford along with his colleagues in 1911 in their famous gold foil experiment. Uh, students, this experiment is also known as Rutherford Atomic Model, Nuclear Model, or Planetary Model. So this is sort of uh, how we, look, we think of atoms today, with electrons on the outside like that, and then in the middle, a dense hard nucleus. That is where the protons and electrons live. But students, it was not always like that. Before the Rutherford and his colleagues did their famous experiment, this is what scientists thought the atom looked like. And they call it the plum pudding model. Uh, students, if you remember, we have discussed before as well, in 1897, J.J. Thomson found in an atom the negatively charged particles, known as electrons. It was established the, that uh, electrons and protons are fundamental particles of matter. So based upon these observations, Thomson put forth his plum pudding theory. He postulated that atoms are the solid structures of positively charged spheres with tiny negative particles stuck inside. It looked like, uh, like the plums in the pudding. Uh, you can also imagine of a blueberry muffin uh, where the blueberries are just a kind of randomly stuck in the dough and that is what scientists thought the atom looked like at a very small scale that electrons were sort of like blueberries and they are were, they were stuck this two kind of positively charged so you got this positively charged dough with negatively charged electrons stuck randomly. But of course, uh, it turned out not to be true. So now we will see how Rutherford and his colleagues showed that the atom had a nucleus and showed that plum pudding model was, uh, was not right. So they started out with a piece of gold foil, which is like a tin foil or aluminium foil, except it is made of gold. So they took this piece of gold foil and they shot tiny little things at it. What they shot at it were called alpha particles, which are tiny positively charged particles, which are much, much smaller than the atom. Um, so they took the gold foil and bam, 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 shot uh, the alpha particles out now. They wanted to know what happens to the alpha particles after they hit the gold foil. And for this, they take a material that flashes when it gets hit by the alpha particles and they took it and burned into a circle like that. So whenever the alpha particle hit, they will see a flash. So here, uh, take a look. A radioactive source emitting alpha particles uh, was enclosed within the protective lead shield. And these positively charged particles are identical to the helium nu atom nucleus and 7,000 times more massive than electrons. Okay. The radiation was focused into the narrow beam after being passed through a slit in the lead screen and a thin section of gold foil was placed in front of the slit and the screen is... Uh, so the screen was coated with zinc sulfide to render it fluorescent, serve as a counter to detect alpha particles. As uh, each alpha particle struck the fluorescent screen, it produced a burst of light uh, which was visible uh, through a viewing microscope attached to the back of the screen, which I haven't shown yet. Uh, the screen itself was movable, so allowing the Rutherford and his colleagues to determine whether or not any alpha particle 
uh, and alpha particles were being deflected by the gold foil or not. So what they see most of the time when they shot alpha particles like bam 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 on the gold file and they see flashes right behind uh, the gold foil. So it indicates that alpha particles are going right through the atoms of the gold foil and ending up over here. So that is the first thing they noticed. Uh, kids, the second thing is really a huge surprise when they shot the alpha particles. Every once in a while, they do not see a flash here. Instead, they see a flash over here or over here, like here, or over here, or over here, which make them think that the alpha particles are hitting the gold foil and are wearing off to the side once in a while or sometime they are hitting the gold foil and are bouncing back completely all the way back so so he made some observations with his colleagues that almost all the particles pass to the foil and deflected and out of 20,000 particles only a few were deflected at fairly large angles and a very few bounced back on hitting the gold foil like at the angle of 180. So based on the information available Rutherford and his colleagues were able to make some conclusions about what the atom actually looks like. So students here is the uh, conclusion they are come to. Let's begin with this gold foil. Kids, the gold foil they use actually is incredibly, incredibly thin. In fact, it is so thin that these guys reason that there are only a few atoms in its thickness. It is only a few atoms thick, so let us look at it on its side here. This is the magnified view of the gold foil and if you want to think about gold atoms as being sort of these circles, um, circles or balls, that is, uh, this is what the view from the side of the uh, this gold foil uh, might look like just two atoms thick here. So first thing they saw is that uh, most of the alpha particles seem to have gone straight through the gold foil. So based on this um, information, they are able to reason that most of the atom is empty space or if there is something there, it is very light, it's not very dense and it is easy for the alpha particles to show right through. So, so most of the atom is probably empty space. But now the second, uh, uh, secondly, uh, some alpha particles were deflected slightly, uh, suggesting interactions with other positive charged particles within the atom and still some other alpha particles uh, were scattered at large angles while a few even bounced back towards the source. So Rutherford uh, famously said later it was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15 inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. So only uh, a positive charge and relatively heavy target particle such as the proposed nucleus could account uh, for such strong repulsions. So I can say here that uh, I can conclude like that the deflection of very few particles prove that there is a center of positive charges in an atom which is called as the nucleus of an atom and this complete rebounds uh, of a few particles show that the nucleus is very hard and dense and secondly uh, since a few particles deflected it shows that the size of nucleus is very small as compared to the rest of the total volume of an atom okay uh, so um, he also uh, they also concluded that the negative electrons that balance um, the electrically the positive nuclear charge uh, were recorded as traveling in circular orbits around the nucleus and uh, the electrostatic force of attraction between the um, 
nucleus uh, and electron was linked to the gravitational force of attraction between the revolving planets of the sun so actually uh, rutherford proposed a planetary uh, model for the structure of atom so kids uh, keeping in view of the experiment observations and then conclusions rutherford proposed a planetary model for the structure of atom and uh, this model this rutherford's model actually supplanted the plum pudding model of english uh, scientist sir jj thompson in which electrons were embedded in positively charged atoms like plum in the pudding as i told you before to just assume like um, muffins and strawberries are just embedded in the in the dough so uh, but uh, uh, students uh, although rutherford experiment proved that plum pudding model was not correct yet it had some defects um uh, kids according to classical theory of radiations electron being the charged particles uh, should release or emit energy continuously and they should ultimately fall into the nucleus and atom would collapse and also if the electrons emit energy continuously they should form a continuous spectrum but in fact they were getting a line spectrum so based wholly on the classical physics uh, the rutherford model itself uh, was preceded in few years by the bohr atomic model which incorporated some early quantum theories so kids it was all about the rutherford atomic model how he uh, concluded that how atoms look like actually so basically rutherford and his colleagues uh, performed this famous goal for experiment to understand that how negative and positive charges could coexist in an atom for this purpose they um, shot the alpha particles on the incredibly thin gold foil so uh, kids uh, rutherford atomic model became known as the nuclear model and uh, in the nuclear atom the protons the neutrons which comprise nearly all the mass of an atom are located inside the um, nucleus at the center of the atom so electrons are distributed uh, around the nucleus and occupy most of the volume of the atom it is a uh, a uh, worth uh, emphasizing just how small the nucleus is as compared to the rest of the atom if we could blow up an atom to a size of a large professional football stadium the nucleus would be about the size of the marble so um so rutherford uh, model proved to be an important step towards a full understanding of the atom however uh, it uh, did not completely address the nature of the electrons and the way in which they occupy um, in which they occupy the vast space around the nucleus it was not until some years later that a full understanding of the electrons was achieved this proved to be a key to understanding the chemical properties of the elements so thank you for watching have a good day